Okay, this is an updated budget process and where the money is spent, um, PowerPoint. Um, and the PowerPoint slides have been updated as well. So um, we're going to start with what is a budget. And I've given you some definitions of budget. But essentially a, a statement of probable revenues and expenditures during a specified period of time. And you've already looked at revenue side. So I um, probably should just note that the revenue side is part of the creation of a budget. We're going to, this slide just reminds us that a budget reflects values. So a budget re is the reflection of the nations or the states or the county or the cities or a family or an individual's priorities, its needs and its promises. Um, I've added this slide in here to talk a little bit about, about appropriation because um, part of the budgeting process is then the appropriation of funds. So I've given you a social work definition, sort of a general definition, and then appropriation bill. So um, our bills that specify how much money can be spent on a given federal program reviewed by appropriation subcommittees in both the House and the Senate, and then the appropriation bills must be approved by the full House and Senate before being signed by the President to become law. And the same process of having appropriation bills applies at the state level as well. So make sure you understand that concept of appropriation. We're going to first look at the federal budget cycle, which is a year cycle starting October 1st and ending September 30th. So we are in a new uh, budget cycle right now, the, 20, the, the fiscal year 16-17 budget cycle. I've given you a few other definitions, a budget resolution. So it's a non-binding agreement between both member, both chambers of Congress that sort of serve as the framework for budget decisions. And then they're to pass 12 appropriation or spending bills. And when they don't do this, which seems to be more often than not, then they will need to pass continuing resolution bills. And so I provided you with those definitions. This is a reminder that the federal budget has a, has a role of the president. So the president proposes his budget, um, which is prepared by the Office of Management and Budget. Um, and so, um, um, so he has done that for the, uh, this October 1st, 2016, September 30th, 2017. Uh, fiscal year. Unfortunately, we don't have a bu budget resolution and the appropriation bills um, process in, in place right now. Um, once the budget is signed into law, um, it's managed by the Office of Management and Budget. I've provided you with a new slide that just reviews the federal budget process, reminding us then that the process is the various federal government agencies submit their budget for review. The president works with his, his Office of Management and Budget to submit a budget request to Congress. The House and the Senate each review and they pass a budget resolution goes to conference committee to create a joint budget resolution, and then we begin the process of 12 appropriation bills coming out of the House and Senate subcommittees, moving into the House and Senate Appropriations Committee, full House and Senate uh, vote, conference committee, and then ideally we have uh, 12 appropriation bills that will fund the federal government. The president then has the opportunity to veto or sign it into law. So again, it's the same process of a bill becoming a law, but here we're talking about budget and appropriation bills. I've added this slide as well, just so that you can take a look at the appropriation subcommittees. There are 12 different appropriation subcommittees that correspond with the 12 different appropriation bill areas. We're going to uh, think a little bit about spending, and there, in terms of there are two really important spending terms to be familiar with, mandatory spending and discretionary spending. So mandatory spending is federal spending that is spent based on existing law rather than the budgeting process. Okay, So the two really big areas are for old age survivors disability insurance and for Medicare are mandatory spending because that spending is authorized um, in state in federal statute. Discretionary spending is the portion of the budget that the president requests and Congress appropriates each year and that comes out of those 12 appropriation uh, bills. Um, this is just a, 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 a diagram that sort of shows something about where the money comes from, tax revenue, um, that comes from income, corporate, and other taxes, and then money that comes through the, uh, through the XI, uh, through the trust fund, the Social Security FICA tax, 
Um, and then we're, we're needing to borrow when we fall short of the amount of revenue we need to uh, fund mandatory spending and discretionary spending and interest on the debt. So you can clearly see that mandatory spending exceeds discretionary spending by two to one. These are some updated slides. Um, and this is just a reminder of the federal uh, government revenue sources through taxation. And you can see the large chunk is coming from individual income taxes followed by payroll taxes with 11% coming from corporate, in ta corporate income taxes. And this was the uh, uh, federal tax revenue for 2015. This, this is an updated slide that just sort of shows you that corporate in the percentage of taxes since 1934 that come from corporate taxes versus individual income taxes. So this is a slide that sort of shows us that um, how much of the spending goes towards mandatory, 65%, discretionary, 29%, and interest on the debt, 6%. So really, Congress really controls, without going back and changing federal statute, 29% of the discretionary spending budget. And this is a breakdown of that discretionary spending budget for 2015. And what you can see is 54% goes to funding the military. Um, and then uh, followed by, I guess, the next largest percentage is really just 6% the government, 6% education, 6% Medicare and, uh, and health, um, and 6% veterans benefit, 6% housing and community and so you can kind of get a sense of uh, the discretionary spending. Again, this is outside of that mandatory spending. This is a slide that just looks at the mandatory spending and it breaks it down with almost half going to Social Security and unemployment and 38% going to Medicare and health related uh, spending. And this is a slide that looks at total federal spending, all of it combined, um, discretionary, mandatory spending, all combined, um, and that you get a sense of the spending, um, which does not appear to include the interest on the debt. Um, we, you already learned about taxes, and but Tax breaks are tax credits and tax deductions that can be taken at the individual and the corporate level. And what this just shows us is that the tax breaks exceed the entire discretionary spending budget. And so you may hear at the federal government level the need to actually re, we need to really go in and take a look at these tax breaks um, in, the, in the tax code um, to get a control of the federal budget. Just a reminder that there are about deficit and debt. State governments cannot have a deficit. They cannot carry a debt. So a deficit is the difference between um, spending between what is the revenue that is generated and what is spent. Okay? And then the debt is the total of all federal deficit deficits over the years, minus any surplus. So we do have a deficit uh, and we do carry a substantial debt. We're going to move on to the Minnesota budget. Um, and the Minnesota budget cycle is a two-year cycle biennium, two-year budget, started Ju July 1st, uh, 2009. Uh, I needed to update this, and I apologize for that. So it started July 1st, 2015, and goes to July 30th, 2017. Um, the operating budget is created in the odd number of years, so it was created in 2015. And the capital budget, or the bonding bonding budget occurs in the even number years. And there are sub-appropriation bills or spending bills that the Minnesota uh, House and Senate must pass and that the governor signs into law. Um, this is just a breakdown from 20, fiscal year 2010-11, just gives you a sense of state spending. And I encourage you to look at the differences between where the federal government spends its money and where the state government spends its money by looking at the allocation of percentages. And this is a breakdown of the Health and Human Services budget, and I wanted just to give you a, a sense of how that money is spent within Health and Human Services. Note 2% goes to welfare spending, and this would be your public assistance, your cash assistance, your uh, MFIP, your general assistance. 
um, your food support. So you can see that we spend a very small percentage of the Health and Human Service budget on actual uh, cash assistance and in-kind benefits. I will, um, I'm going to remind you to go to the two handouts that I provided to you, or actually the one handout that has fiscal year 2016-17 general funding, spending, and revenue, so take a look at that. Um, so now you can continue with your other online activities, and I apologize for some of the challenges that we had getting this, getting this to you.